Smile 2 hit theaters a few days ago. I reviewed it and now I'm back for a spoiler video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the highest highs and the lowest lows. So if you've seen the movie or you don't care to have things spoiled, I'm gonna be talking about Voss Water Presents Smile 2. Before I begin, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that subscribe really quick and the notification bell, that way these show up in future feeds. Before I really dive into the details, I do want to quickly talk about the bottled water in the room, and that's Voss. This is easily the most annoying character in the film. Voss water is featured throughout this entire movie, and it's obnoxious. And not only that, how Naomi Scott drinks it, oh my god, that's triggering as hell. Keep in mind, I very much enjoyed Smile 2, but I didn't enjoy a single second of that Voss water product placement. Naomi Scott's character Sky is a recovering drug addict, so a way they've come up with to diffuse that thirst, that appetite she has for the drugs, she takes a bottle of Voss water and pounds that thing. <laughs> I feel like Naomi Scott went to some performing arts center for how to chug a bottle of water for six months because holy crap, she's a pro at it. And she does it all the time in this movie. I think you genuinely could cut out a couple minutes straight of her drinking water. <laughs> Maybe we call it the Voss cut because we're gonna cut it all out. Voss aside, the movie starts out with a young man who's not feeling well. He's not looking great. It's clear that he's got the smile demon on his shoulder and he's trying to get rid of it. Thankfully, he knows how, which as we learned from the first film, means brutally killing someone in front of another bystander. A uh, fun side note, I used to think it was bystander. Thought there was a D, it's bystander. You <laughs> learn something new all the time, it's crazy. I am also an idiot, so it was probably just me. But regardless, he shows up at a crack house and he's gonna take out a drug dealer in front of another dude. Plan didn't work as more people show up. He bails out the window and right into the road where in standard horror practice, a car going 8,000 miles an hour sideswipes a guy. I love this intro though, and I love how Parker Finn filmed it. It doesn't have a crazy shaky cam to get you into the moments. No, he has a very steady camera that's constantly moving around. It looked like a single take for some of it going out the window and outside. Very well done. After a very intense opening scene, we slow things down. We get to meet the protagonist of the film, Sky, And she's just really getting back into the swing of things. She's a huge sensation, lots of adoring fans around the world, but she fell on hard times when she was in a bad car wreck with her boyfriend who we will find out she was kind of responsible for killing later. When she grabs the wheel of the vehicle and pulls that thing hard right, they take a nose dive off the cliff and into a tree. He dies on impact and she does not go out unscarred. She's got wounds down the stomach. She's got a bad leg. It's a bad situation. It is a bad situation for sure, but one that she could recover from as long as nothing bad happens, right? As long as a psychotic evil smile demon doesn't attach itself to her body and cause her to go insane over seven days. What are the odds of that? Turns out pretty good. We're gonna see her dancing, doing some pop singing, performing a little line dancing cartwheel trick. That's pretty sweet. And uh, I kept thinking to myself, when's Lady Raven gonna show up? From the hit film Trap, when's her best friend Lady Raven? Is this in the same universe? Uh, no, it's not, because Trap sucks, and this movie's actually pretty damn fun. Oh, and also Sky Riley, far superior to Lady Raven. Sky would be like Pink, and Lady Raven would be like Skylar Grey. Why does Eminem keep trying to make her a thing? Anyway, even though sky has been clean for a year and she's really trying to shape up, she is under immense pain because of the fallout from the car wreck, so she's looking for a way to ease it. House style. She needs those painkillers, man! Thankfully, she has a hookup through her good buddy, Lewis. Since the strongest medication she's gonna be able to get signed over from a doctor is Tylenol, her buddy Lewis is gonna be the guy she turns to. She heads there that night, noticing right out of the gates that something is amiss. There are tells with certain people. You can see if their eyes are dilated, you can see if they're twitchy, if they're licking their lips a lot, or in this case, if they pull out a katana and try to cut your head off. Just like me, Skye's very perceptive. She knows the tells. Now, where Sky and I might differ a little bit, what separates us is if my friend was acting completely insane and he pulled a sword on me and tried to kill me, I'd probably duck out. 
I'd probably make a phone call later, see if he's okay and then try again or just never talk to the person after that. She's gonna stick around though because she really wants the drugs. He heads into the other room, doesn't come back for a long time so we know he's dead and she's probably gonna be on the chopping block. And yeah, that's exactly what happens because when he comes back, he has that stupid shit eating grin on his face. And he looks around the room and says, you know what? I haven't got my reps in today. Grabs a 35 pound plate, pussy. I'm doing 45s, no problem. And keeps slowly smashing his own face in with it, smiling all the while. Wipe out. Sky locks up like a deer in the headlights, frozen in place until the deed is done. And then she scampers backwards like, fuck. Vomits all over the ground, doesn't bother to clean the mess up, and gets out of there. I did appreciate how later she's Googling if you can find DNA and vomit. That's something I would probably do. Oh, no, you, no, you know what? I would clean up the mess. That's what I would do. Actually, you know what? I wouldn't have been there having the opportunity to throw up because when the guy put a sword to my throat, I leave. This is where the recovery is not going to go so great for Skye. She's going to start seeing shit. As the story goes from the first one, she has seven days to figure out what's going on or die trying. Now, there are some lore issues with this one. I will fully admit, I'm completely lost by the end of this movie. I'll probably need to rewatch it. I could look all this stuff up before I hit record and I could act like an expert. I think it's more fun to just be genuine and speak if I understood the movie where it was going or if I need a rewatch or whatnot. And yeah, there's always gonna be comments like, this idiot didn't understand, da, 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 whatever. Who cares? Don't listen to me then. Bottom line is, this movie ends in an insane way. And I spent like 15 minutes with a couple people I was with trying to understand when she actually was fully under the spell, how much of the end scenes were even real, and what I'm supposed to make of any of it. And maybe it's irrelevant. It doesn't really matter that much because the smile demon is messing with her and the audience at that point. You are under their spell. You don't know what's real and what's fake. All you know is you're dead. But before we get there, there's gonna be a bunch of different scenes that play out, some of which I think were completely unnecessary and do nothing more than make this movie longer than it needed to be. After chugging her 53rd Voss at her beautiful flat that she never turns lights on in, she gets several text messages from a mysterious person saying she's in trouble, they know who this person is. They know that she was at her friend's place that night when he died. And she's gonna ignore it until later into the picture. But she's also been avoiding a phone call to her friend who she desperately needs to talk to. But in the scene, she finally does it. She picks up the phone, she talks to her girlfriend, and she said she'll be there in 45 minutes. Which is unfortunate because just as she hangs up the phone, a new visitor shows up. Smile Demon. In the form of a stark naked Lewis. Shit stained underwear and all, I kid you not. What an unnecessary thing to throw in. She walks down the hallway where she sees a bunch of his clothes scattered, including the tidy whities that aren't so tidy whitey. And there he is in the shadows, just looking at her. He starts chasing after her. She's like, fuck, 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 fuck. Runs to the front door where her friend shows up, just in the nick of time. And Smile Demon's gone. Painkillers are a hell of a drug. She chalks it up to a bad night's sleep, being under pressure and whatnot. Uh, maybe the fact that she saw a buddy get his face smashed in by himself, eh, that can do something to the psyche. So she's just gonna go on with her day. She's got another practice, but things are gonna keep getting worse for her. At one point during a dance rehearsal, her bone splits through her leg. She freaks the fuck out, blames the other cast members, and then she storms off to her dressing room that is completely destroyed. And the person that just walked out of there was Joshua, who had that stupid smile on his face too. Joshua is her personal assistant, and her mother Elizabeth is her manager. It's always good to have your family that close. What could possibly go wrong when you mix business and family? Joshua's gonna get an earful from Sky. She's pissed at him about this, but there's no time to dwell. Not only does she have a tour to prepare for, her mother just signed her up to do some gala thing with the producer. It's gonna benefit young kids of today or some shit. It doesn't matter. This is not good timing. 
And this is the portion where the movie starts to lose me a bit. There's a lot of kind of slow, unnecessary scenes of her going crazy that I think could have been done a lot quicker. We have already established she's losing her mind and she's seen things. So having a meet and greet where these characters are gonna slowly come up to her and do this whole song and dance and then go to the gala where she freaks out, it was just too much. Although I did appreciate the dark humor where the smiling little girl with pigtails came up and Sky didn't want to get too close to her, so she just slowly reaches out her hand and Sharpie signs the t-shirt she's wearing. That was good. But the whole benefit dinner section I felt was completely unnecessary. Although it was very funny when she pushed the old lady over. <laughs> All right, let's get to the absolutely bonkers final act. The last half hour or so, things go completely off the rails. It's fun, it's insane, and I don't know what the hell's going on. She meets a guy at the bar. This is the mystery dude that's been contacting her on the phone. He wants to meet up with her. He has a brother who died from this demon, and he knows how to stop it. When she gets to the bar, she's in disguise. She's got the Marshall Mathers hoodie on, she's got the hat. Really tough to tell who she is, except for everybody somehow still spots her. They're chatting at the bar, and this guy proposes that he kills her for a couple minutes so the demon has no host and it will hopefully just perish. Then he can revive her since he is a nurse. She's not into it, but eventually will come around after a few more mishaps take place, one of which includes her killing her mother. You see, we had her do a full breakdown in front of all the gala members, including her mother and her producer, which ended with her pushing an old lady off the stage. Now, I'm not sure how she wasn't put into some sort of a rehab facility that night or why she was able to go back to her flat by herself, but that's what happened. And that night, she's gonna try to get out of Dodge. She packs a suitcase, she gets her toothbrush, she throws a fit for a little bit in the bathroom, smashing mirrors, but she's not gonna make it out the door because the smile demon's back, baby. This time in the form of a dance collective. Scanning, dun 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 dun, ski da dee dee, ski da dee dee, dee da dee dee dee. They're dancing down the hallways, dun 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 dee dee ski da dee 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 dee, ski da dee 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 ba. Her mother finally checks her into a clinic. She's got a nice bed to herself. She's got that Voss water, whole collection of it in a fridge right next to her. It's the only brand of water in existence. You gotta love Voss. Pay me. Her and her mother get in a bit of a tiff. A scuffle, really. Her mom's not believing what she's selling. And it's gonna end in a very horrific manner. Her mom loses her shit, smashes the mirror, grabs a shard of glass, and starts cutting into her face, including popping out an eye, stabbing the shit out of her neck, all while showing off those beautiful pearly whites. She falls to the floor, dead as can be, and as Skye's leaving the room in a mad dash, she realizes she's holding that same piece of glass. She killed her mom. She gets the hell out of there, jumps in a car, meets the nurse downtown. They go into the sketchy back room of an abandoned facility. He puts her on this bed, leaves the room, only to return as another version of Skye. It's Sky v. Sky now. They're fighting, they're throwing each other, and then the full smile demon takes shape. Coming out of the mouth, has those hilarious eyes, and then it all goes away. Sky is on stage, ready to perform live in front of tens of thousands of adoring fans encased in her vagina thing that's gonna open up where she reveals herself to the world. Unfortunately, the smile demon was all too real. And this will be the final performance where she digs her hands into her own stomach, pulling apart the scar and showcasing the nasty alien demon creature. It comes out in all its awkward body shaped self, looks sky dead in those eyes and says, it is time. It's time to put on your final show. She takes the microphone and she starts breaking her own face with it, eventually killing herself horrifically in front of all of these new people that can be taken over for Smile 3, sponsored by Voss Water. Thirsty yet? And this is where I'm totally confused.
What the hell just happened? When did she start seeing all of this stuff? How much of it was real? What was the point where the smile demon had fully taken over her brain and was feeding her images? Was it when her room was trashed at like the 45 minute mark of the movie and everything after that was just in her psyche? Did it all actually play out that way? But then she was somehow transported to the stage. I don't understand. And when this stuff was playing out, what was everybody else doing? Was she just a zombie standing in the corner of the room drooling while this stuff was happening? Was she sleeping on the couch? I also forgot to mention the friend that she made up with on the phone was never there either. That was all in her head. They moved on, ride or die bitches sort of thing. But then we find out in the final act that that was all the demon messing with her and that her actual friend still hates her guts. So it's a wild reveal, but one that I felt almost cheated on. When, when did this take place? I don't understand. There's no real clues that I could see as to when she was fully taken over. I wish they would have gone back to it. It's like, oh, this was fake and this was fake and here's why and here's how it played out. Granted, you shouldn't have to hold the audience's hand, but I am typically pretty good at understanding where the movie and the story is pushing and I just can't still figure it out. Those are my spoiler thoughts on Smile 2, a movie I very much enjoyed, but I'm also like, wh why, why did this take so long to get here? It's about two hours, it should have been shorter, and it needed a little bit more at the end to tie it all together. Let me know though if I'm just completely off base and it made perfect sense. Leave a comment, please again thinking of subscribing, liking the video, and maybe supporting the channel at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I post tons of movie reviews every week. Would love to have the support, and hopefully I see you next time. Take care.